Welcome, guys. I'm Lane LeVanway, and you know what time it is. Actually, I think we can talk about this later. Right now, I'm addressing the entity within. Constantine, Episode 4, Feast of Friends. <laughs> Alright guys, so here we are, episode 4 of Constantine, and I'm telling you, this was a great episode. It had a lot of good moments, I really enjoyed it overall, I thought it was a lot of fun, it might be my favorite episode, but it was also the creepiest episode. Now in this episode we get to meet one of John's old friends, back from the Newcastle incident that has been referenced throughout the episodes, where the girl got dragged to hell, and his name is Gary, and Gary is the reason that this whole episode is happening because Gary has brought a hunger demon into the city, and it got released, and now John has to deal with it. So like always, these are my top five OMG moments that are in no particular order or rank of what I like above the other. Generally, they're just in chronological order in the episode. So let's get into number one. Okay, so they need something to contain Menemoth. Menemoth? This hunger demon, this extremely powerful hunger demon. And the way it had been brought in by Gary was in this bottle that he had trapped it in. So, John is constructing a bottle using the, si the symbol of Solomon and the ring of Solomon, which is like this really cool finger glove thing with the blade, and he's etching it into this bottle. And then he some put some spell upon it and I just love the imagery of this you get to see a cool new little gadget in whatever the Solomon's the Solomon's ring is that allows him to etch in these powerful uh, symbols into the bottle to contain the demon and I love just seeing that you get to see that how he John has to make what he uses these things aren't necessarily like just readily available black magic dark voodoo type things that he can just go and pick up at 7-eleven or Costco or wherever he needs. He's got to take the time to make it, and that talks about his, his intelligence, his knowledge, and, his, and how he's able to construct these things. It was just a great moment in the episode. Number two. Okay, so number two on this is a little bit of the sense of humor of John. I love these moments throughout the show where you get to see Constantine's little bits of humor, where he brought the, the food in, in the two episodes back, and he had the he had the frozen meal and certain little throwaway lines he gives out and his sarcasm. I love these little moments. Now this moment takes place where he's he's tracked the hunger demon down into like a meat locker. It's like a meat company. It's in the locker, and he sees some of the dead bodies of the people who've been possessed, but now they can no longer contain that demon. The demon leaves the body drained, and he looks over and on the wall is the sign that says, "Oh." It's been 27 days since our last incident, or our last accident. And as soon as I saw that, and he took interest, I knew it was going to happen, but it was still fantastic. He walks over, erases the 27, and writes a zero. Now I just think it's great. He's hunting this demon. Yet he still took the time, in his mind, to just erase that and put the zero because it was important. Or maybe it was just a sick sense of humor going through him, that even in these dark moments, he has to find a little silver lining, a little bit of lightness, something to just fancy his uh, wicked, disturbed sense of humor to be able to keep pressing on. Number three. Okay, so this moment was a really trippy moment where Constantine to, goes to what appears to be a friend of his, Nom Nomo and he needs some information about this demon because it's way more powerful than he expected. And so he has to go on this journey with Nomo, like a psychedelic journey, and he has to be able to see through Nomo, Nomo's eyes to understand. And so he presents to John the most powerful narcotic ever. It is so powerful that it never wears off. Unless, of course, you have the antidote. But I love this because watching John be like, I think I can handle this. this isn't my first rodeo, drugs, whatever. It's been a while since I've been hallucinated. Whoa, don't you think forever is a bit much? Just all these little moments in there were great leading up to it. And then, of course, he bites into it. It's like a stick, and he bites into it. Oh, oh that's god-awful. Like, <laughs> it was so great. And then he, well, if, uh, how, how do we get to know when this thing, how do, if we're all messed up, trip, what's he, he says, we're all, if we're all tripping balls, how are we going to know when to apply the antidote? Whoa, and then just behind him. Whoa, and the, his friend gets all creepy looking and then like a big sun. 
But it, and it was just great imagery. I love the imagery, the whole thing. And John's like, what the? Ooh. But the best part, and also the most disturbing part, is Nomo reaches over, right up into his eye, pulls it out of his face, pulls his eye out, and then sticks it in his own head, and then goes on to talk about this demon so that John can understand. And I was like, don't do it, don't pull out his eye, no, oh, I did it, but I had to watch, I couldn't actually, like, you know, it's like one of those where you're like, no, uh, yuck, ugh, it's, but it was fantastic, I loved this moment, and it, this is a show on network television, on NBC, so to see kind of a little greasy, gruesome moment like that, I, I really enjoyed, and I liked the disturbingness of the imagery on that whole scene. Number four. So number four is a little more generic. It's sort of just the generalness of watching the demon possess people and and his whole demeanor. It's this swarm of bugs and beetles. It's disgusting. And you see it, you know, as it swarms out of people's mouths and then it goes into somebody's body and then that person's almost like a zombie and they just want to feed all and they're just stuffing themselves. But they're, but they just sound, they're like, and, uh, and they're just trying to eat everything they can. They just want to consume, consume as their bodies being consumed. And there's a great one when you see the first guy get possessed. He's like an airport guard, and he just looks gross. And then when it leaves him, because he's basically dead, and you just see his body kind of like, like just sinking in. And also all of those moments, I think, are just fantastic. I say fantastic a lot, but they're really good. And I just like the, the way it looks, the way it sounds. It had this very zombie-like feel to it, and it was creepy. And, of course, it's bugs, and that really makes it creepy. So, I mean, this episode had a lot of creep factor for sure in it. Number five. Okay, so for number five, big, big spoilers. Now, I assume you're, if you're watching this, you've actually watched the episode, but in case you haven't, number five is a huge end of the episode spoiler. Like, literally the end of the episode, but it was too good, too good not to talk about this. So we'll give a few seconds here. If you don't want to see the spoiler, hear the spoiler. Then click away now. Okay, if you stuck around, you've either seen the episode or you just want to know, you don't care, and you want to know the ending. So it turns out the only way to contain this demon is in a human body, a sacrifice. And then you trap it with these, you need a certain kind of knife, and you need to carve the runes into the, into the vessel's face, and you trap the demon inside, and the demon basically consumes itself and the host, killing them both. And that's the only way to stop it. Well, John decides to use Gary, his friend. And there's a lot of stuff behind. Gary was at Newcastle, and Gary was high because he's a junkie. And he was high when the whole thing went down with the demons taking the girl. And then he was hiding, and he ran away, and he couldn't take it. And John describes him as just like, he's not a very good person, he's a junkie, he doesn't care, he's selfish. And you can see that the Gary's riddled with guilt throughout this episode because of that, what happened to that girl in Newcastle. So John realizes he's going to have to use his friend. And when they get to that moment where he's going to, he reveals it, and his friend's like, you sneaky bastard, this was your plan the whole time, wasn't it? But he's accepting of it because he wants to feel like his life has meaning and that there's been some good and this will be good. And he wants to make amends for what happened to that little girl. And so he lets John, and John even gives a great line where he's, we can draw straws, but the guy knows he needs to do this and this is how he needs to go out honorably. And John tells him it will be painful. It will not be, it could take days. They're ready for it. They get up, and he, the demon's eating popcorn. The, whoever he's possessed is, is eating popcorn, and the demon comes out into his friend, and then he carves the symbols into his friend. And it's kind of heartbreaking because he's like, I'm, you know, he's telling, he told him, I'm so proud of you in this moment. And then you cut, you see, he cuts back, and he's brought him back to, the, to their bunker, and Zed gets pissed because she's like, How could you do this with your friend? And there's other ways. And he's like, Look, I told you. People die around me. If you can't take that, then you leave now. You know, this was the only way. I said, I'm saving countless lives by sacrificing the one. And she's like, okay, 
what do we do? And they put him in, and the final shot of the episode is him in the room with Gary, and Gary is screaming out in pain and thrashing, and he looks like he's um, uh, to the bed. He's belted to the bed, restrained onto the bed, and Constantine's just sitting there holding his hand quietly and being there, taking it. Like, I put you into this, and so I, too a part of the consequences of what we've done to stop this demon and so I don't get to walk away I get to be here for you and you're my friend and until this ends I'm here watching and witnessing you deserve that that's the feeling I got from it it was very powerful and then the angel I can't remember the angel's name but the angel who constantly is appearing throughout every episode shows up and usually he's a punk you know he's cryptic and he and he's always sort of taunts John and harasses John. But here, he, at the end of this episode, he shows up and he just sort of sits there. Like, together, he's going to be there with John as this man has to be sacrificed and is in pain. And there's nothing they can do about it until basically his body wastes away. It was an incredibly powerful moment. And it was a great insight into John and probably things he's had to do before. That like Constantine has probably had to make choices like this before for the greater good. And... He, it's, you know, not good. It's crap. He has to make crap decisions to help people because evil doesn't necessarily play right. And he just has to do what he has to do to stop these things. And it gives you that insight into sort of my, maybe he is the way he is. And, and it was fantastic and emotional. And even though we didn't get to see Gary too much, there was enough, I think, in this episode to feel for him and this relationship between them. All right, guys, so if you haven't seen one of my videos before, we do these Constantine videos every week. Tune in for every new Constantine episode. We're going to do a top five OMG moments that I feel anyway were top moments in the episode. But don't let that stop you. Do you agree with my moments? Do you have some of your own moments? Let's talk about it down below. That's the point of this is so that we can have a discussion and enjoy a TV show together and talk about things we liked and heck, if there's things you don't like, talk about that or if you disagree with me and you thought those moments were crap or I'm misreading them, let me know because that is how we communicate. Alright guys, so make sure you hit subscribe so you can watch and be aware of one of these Constantine episodes every week. Plus, there's movie reviews, my son does movie reviews, so you get to see what a nine-year-old thinks about movies. And we've got a lot more coming on this channel, quick movie news, and plenty more to come. So make sure you hit subscribe, and do me a favor and like this video, and let me know how much you love it, guys. Well, till next time, watch more TV.